So hopefully most of you have met me throughout this series. I'm Stephanie Danvers. I'm the events engagement leader, always possible. So thanks again for joining us for this session, which is slightly different from the ones we've been doing. It's, it's not um, a webinar, it's a meeting. So this is really the chance for you to ask questions and really get under, under the skin of um, what's bugging you, what you need help with. We're joined by um, some digital champions. We've got Rachel Dines and Lisa Kerr joining us today. So they'll be able to chip in and, and support you on any questions that um, are burning today, as well as our facilitators who've been um, running the sessions for us throughout January. So it's nice to have lots of faces and, and people joining us. Um, so yeah, lots of questions today. I've got some that I wanna, wanna share and pick up from the last sessions for those that weren't able to join, but I'm gonna pose some questions to the facilitators as well. So much of, so much of it has been on you as businesses. So I'm gonna throw it around the other way and um, ask our facilitators some posing questions and things that help them work, how they work remotely, top tips, things that they like, you know, anything they wanna share. We want to hear from the experts, but as ever, it is an Ask the Expert session today, so we do want to put, um, put your questions their way. Like I said, we've got um, Lisa Kerr and Rachel Dines joining us today, who are two of our digital champions. Um, Rachel's a marketing expert, and she joined some of the earlier sessions with Creative Bloom, but also um, we've got Lisa Kerr, who um, is a chartered accountant, but she also has a wealth of knowledge around apps and systems to keep you productive, all those things. So um, she's been joining quite a few of our sessions throughout January. So um, please do pass questions her way. As I said, it is the last session in our series. So it's the seventh series session we've been running and as experts panel. So I think most of you joining us today have um, joined other, other sessions in the series, but just to recap, for those who are going to be watching the recordings later on, um, these events are run by West Sussex County Council and have been taking place since September, um, organised to help small and medium businesses um, utilise digital tools and gain expert knowledge and advice on how best to grow your online presence and attract and retain new customers. We're at the end of um, the fourth series, host, um, hosted by Always Possible. Previous series um, run by Freedom Works and Creative Bloom have presented sessions around getting online customers and marketing and systems and productivity. So like I said, the aim of the series is to help businesses like yourselves create the right conditions for growth in a digital world. So we've covered tools for automation, online sales, cybersecurity and keeping productive whilst working apart. And these are some of the questions that I wanna to pose to our facilitators today to see how they work and you know, share their top tips. But they've done, we've done sessions around this, but it's good to get their insight on what works for them as well. So I want to take this time to share, um, to introduce our facilitators from the series, give a quick roundup on what they've um, covered off in their sessions and key takeaways for those that weren't able to join. So I'm just going to stop sharing and hand it over to Jodie. Hello. Hello, everyone. Um, yes, yeah, so I, um, uh, yeah, my name is Jodie Rainsford. I uh, run an agency called Hello Genius. Um, we are a, uh, a digital agency and so we rely quite heavily on uh, digital tools for growth. And that was the subject of the, the opening session. Um, and so the key things that we were, we were talking about in, in that was uh, the opportunity around the, the, the digital tools afford for, for things like growth, for things like increasing productivity. We talked in quite a general way. Um, and one of, the, uh, one of the things we really focused on was the right way to think about digital tools. Um, that you know, it's kind of a mistake that a lot of people make around you know choosing choosing tools that have all the bells and whistles that you get very excited about. Everyone gets very excited about technology, um, but actually, you know, we can distill it to um, really thinking of the function that we need from from technology and what we need it to do, and be very practical. Um, so, like some of the questions we you know we wanted to focus on really is things like you know if we're if we're looking to change a process, if we're looking to to use a digital tool, what is the goal of of the um, uh, that we're trying to achieve you know what isn't working what's missing from what we're doing and, and how long will it take to implement and we had a, a really interesting discussion um uh, with the uh, with the digital champions as well because i think we we kind of came to the conclusion that we you know thinking about the function first is it, really important but a lot of the implementations or implementation of, of the technology that we use all comes down to things like understanding culture understanding you know how 
how we implement those things in the business and how we um, how we roll it out and actually making it part of the behavior of the business rather than you know it, it, it's it's centered around technology and so um, there were a couple of a couple of questions in that session around you know how do I how do I use certain types of technology in order to, to scale my business how do I step out of what I'm doing in order to you know work on the business rather than in the business um, and it, it, we really kind of centered around the conclusion that it's about focusing on what you know, what you need right now, focusing on the, the, the process and focusing on your behaviors and trying to use technology to, uh, to sort of leverage yourself out of those. So, so that's really what, what we covered. Um, and we were left really with, uh, with the action that we wanted everyone to choose a digital tool for, for, for a function and actually commit to, to get into grips with it um, and understanding how that they could they could use it in their business to uh, to kickstart growth. Thanks, Jody. And um, Emrys, you were um, following Jody. You could give us a little uh, little snapshot. Indeed, yes. Hi, everyone. So, uh, yes, yeah, so I'm Emrys uh, from Cloud Artisans. We're a digital and engagement agency uh, up in the Midlands, um, working with a whole variety um, of small businesses and nonprofits. And the session that we had, uh, which she did as a meeting format, so we had some uh, breakouts and conversations as well. And we were very much looking at um, digital technology for the future and how to protect businesses there and then. So we had a whole um, large chunk around cybersecurity um, and uh, an element of going through all of the, unfortunately, all the different risks and the things that could happen um, and identifying some of those. Um, but most importantly, uh, some practical ways of actually um, avoiding them in the first place and reducing risks, uh, as well as uh, exploring a little bit of how to recover from um, any actual issues that may well appear uh, for people as well. So backups and different ways of holding data and, and where they might be. Um, and then the uh, more exciting part, certainly for me in terms of prepping the presentation, was uh, also looking at some of the future technologies and just thinking about different ways that people might uh, come in there. So to give a couple of specific examples, you know, I sort of pulled out some reports um, from, for example, the World Economic Forum, um, who'd looked at sort of emerging technologies, um, and there's some great stuff going on around uh, sort of the green economy, um, sort of decarbonisation, the technologies that are there now, um, and uh, different types types of sensors um, that can work with that and that also relates into the health tech um, element um, and so much that can happen now in terms of sort of diagnosing things just from um, breathing out um, and using a device that can pick up uh, various different conditions and such like um, and also um, sensors that you could just sort of implant in your arm for example so great for sort of diabetics and, and such like now as well so looking at some of those um, uh, other technologies that are coming through and actually starting to think okay well how do these apply to my businesses what are some of the underlying tech um, um, that actually I could start to build on around sort of artificial intelligence and um, big data that drives all of those sorts of um, things as well. So in particular, we could look at um, HR uh, type systems um, and also using uh, things like uh, improved GPS how could they work with sort of fleets of vans or indeed keeping people safe if they're out on the road or going to different places you know in this sort of even more remote world now and people working from everywhere what are those ways to stay in touch um, and ensure everyone uh, is having a great time with work uh, so yeah those, those sort of the uh, the core areas that we uh, sort of spent our hour and a half uh, on um, and uh, sort of finished on uh, actually identifying the skills aspect. So um, one thing I would say is one, looking at a business from a point of view of, okay, what are, what are the technologies that can enable um, my business to grow and do more of? Um, and uh, and therefore, what are the skills we need to help deliver those? But also thinking about your existing staff and going, okay, so what are the skills that our current staff have and how can we map that to the types of tools and technologies that we might use? Because actually you could have objectives of what you want to achieve, but how you achieve that can be done in a few different ways. And um, actually thinking about what's the most um, practical um, approach for you as an organization. Do you need to get a load of new people in or could you take the approach um, of utilizing people you've already got, whether that's low code, no code type solutions or people that do know a bit more um, sort of code aspect and is that more efficient to drive what you want to do? Um, so yeah, that was our three areas. Thank you. Thanks, Amaris. Yeah, you definitely covered a lot in that and I've, I've personally found that session really useful. So um, Lindsay, please uh, share with us. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Lindsay Siegel, founder of Heads Up Coaching. I'm a business coach and trainer specialising in time management and productivity. And I run the session um, on how do I use technology to save time and increase sales. So um, ultimately, we're looking at um, before thinking about 
um, how we can use productivity and how we can use tools to enhance the way we work, actually understanding our relationship with time and our productivity styles. Um, and once we have that understanding, then it's about how we can sort of maximise that um, individually and also within a team. Um, looked at different a whole range of strategies and tools and techniques to help sort of plan and prioritise your time and tasks and to reduce some of that overwhelm um, and to feel more in control of your time rather than your, your time and your workload controlling you. Um, also looked at ways of sort of minimising distractions and helping to increase focus um, as we're living in an increasingly distracting world and especially working sort of remotely and um, away from people that we're used to sort of working with in an office environment, helping really to kind of maximise the way in which we work. Um, and also ways of sort of tracking productivity as well whether that's through kind of tools and apps and using um, systems that are already um, available to you like through Google and things like that just to kind of track your productivity give you that feedback and have that accountability. Um, also looked at a range of e-commerce tools um, to sort of improve and enhance that um, sales process as well through, um, through websites and um, digital tools and how um, just have a great understanding of how we can save time and increase income with different digital tools. Um, I guess the key sort of takeaways was always trying to have that accountability and, and actually sort of um, identify specific tools and techniques that people wanted to use that would make a difference, that would help them. Um, that was primarily through task management apps such as Todoist, um, but also, um, Trello, so having that kind of overview of time and tasks and having that overview um, across the team of what people are working on and what's in progress and what's outstanding. Um, and um, some apps to track productivity and the Pomodoro technique, which is a really popular one that people were wanting to implement. So that's it in a nutshell. Thanks, Lindsay. I'm a big advocate of uh, Pomodoro. So yeah. Um, and Emma, thank you. Hi everyone, so good afternoon. I'm Emma Mills Sheffield and I run Mind Setup. Um, and firstly, welcome to Stephanie's Productivity Cat, who's obviously joined us on video, which I just love. It's one of the things you don't get in offices anymore. So I do like to uh, you know, get the odd, odd pet in to any session. My session was focused on boosting um, productivity. And for me, it's very much about the team aspect. So my background was spending 15 years in industry, leading major global projects, um, large scale pursuits, sales transformation projects, that sort of thing. But what's most important is not just that kind of Gantt chart of end to end, how to get something done, but it's the human interaction as you go through that process with some very complex um, stakeholder needs and everything. I take that sort of approach and, and scale it down now to smaller and scaling businesses. And to understand how people work remotely is really, really important. In person, yes, we can kind of read those cues. Remotely, how do you build a team remotely, keep communication open, stay productive, and actually kind of have a cohesive community? So my session was focused very much on looking at some of the tools that you might use for that, but also what are those intrinsic and then extrinsic motivators and those factors that um, encourage employee well-being, satisfaction, performance, and ultimately productivity. So mine's very much a people focused, uh, although digital tools are a massive enabler, it's knowing which ones to use when and why. So building on some of the previous sessions, we covered things like um, Miro for collaboration, Monday, uh, Slack, all of those different tools that we've possibly heard of. But my, one of my takeaways really for people is to avoid shiny magpie syndrome and think, okay, there's something we have to use because it's new and everyone's using it. But in reality, boil down what you expect the output and the outcomes to be and choose the most appropriate tools for your teams. Um, so yeah, really it was around sort of communication skills, understanding how to coach people and how to kind of work with those, um, the, the parameters that we have if you're remote. So yeah, very much the human angle. So it's a great session. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and finally, um, it was Lucy. Lucy, over to you. Afternoon. It's bright and sunny here in Bristol. Um, 
my session was all about innovation thinking and using digital tools and some non-digital tools, but really hooking in all the things that, that, that Jody and Emma's session were talking about around, yes, the digital tools to innovate your business, but actually that we've all been innovating over the last couple of years, almost accidentally. Um, I head up uh, the University of West of England Innovation for Growth Fund. I also look after the Tech Spark Swindon and Wiltshire community, which is the, the tech community in this region. And a lot of companies have kind of evolved and innovated because we've been forced to, but how do we then create that culture in the business and have innovation thinking be a part of the strategy and the culture going forward? It might have been uncomfortable, but actually it's, it's uh, it's evolutionary, it's potentially incredibly exciting, it's how businesses should be thinking, but what tools can you use to keep yourself curious, to keep yourself at the forefront of research? And, and I interviewed a couple of my colleagues from UWE who head up the innovation team, our entrepreneur in residence at Future Space, and also Tan, who heads up the Digital Innovation Fund here, to look at how founders approach innovation and SMEs and established businesses, how they fund it, things they get very wrong, so trying to obviously avoid the potholes. And we had a really good conversation around getting innovation right. And maybe maybe innovation as a word needs rebranding, that it is what every business should be doing, being curious, looking outside at their competitors and their scenario, sort of their infrastructure and, and whatever business you're in, making sure you're, you spend some time working on the business or in the business are coming to sessions like this and how refreshing that is and it'd be lovely when we're in a room together won't it when you know some of the the magic happens in the coffee break moment but thinking innovatively just means have that curiosity having that appetite for change and tapping into all the resources we have from the the digital champions to the um the growth hub itself through to the bipc through to the universities we have in the region get out there and allocate some of your time as a business owner to to be out there finding new ways of doing business and, and moving forward Great. Thanks, Lizzie. And, and also, you know, touching on that, we had a session with Richard last week where we were joined by um, four businesses, Jeremy as well, um, talking around that digital disruption and how it has led to innovation, how they've been forced to change how they work, you know, pivot, do things differently. And, you know, it's it's been really interesting to see. And there were some really good success stories from that that they were able to share last week. So um, for those who have not seen it, um, the video is on West Sussex uh, County Council's YouTube channel. So please do check in on that. Um, but yeah, I think um, I am going to take this opportunity to, well, leave the floor open for those who want to ask questions. Um, but also, I thought I might just, like I said, I'm going to flip it round to our facilitators. We've talked so much about tools Gosh, Monday, Canva, Miro, uh, all sorts, Clockify, all those sorts of things. I have my personal favourites, but it'd be really good to hear from each of you as to what in your, in the way that you work, how, what do you use and what could you not live without? What's been revolutionary to how you work? Um, let's start with Emma. I would say my newest adopted piece of tech that I absolutely love now is Miro. So you can run lots of collaborative online sessions with it. It requires more skill, I'd say, than some of the others because you can present one way, but actually to collaborate, to facilitate, to lead, to type. And, you know, as everyone watches you typing, you're thinking, right, this is the time I'm going to throw in all the typos. Um, so it requires, and for me, that was the learning experience. And as Lucy was saying about curiosity, I want to be curious on in all of my work. I don't want to get bored and stuck. And I think that's the problem with some of the other tools. You know, Slack is great. It has its place. Um, Monday is my other go-to. When you're working with clients that use certain systems, you have to be agile. You can't be stuck and set in your ways. Um, working on your own, you don't need an awful lot. But when you're working with others, you suddenly have to understand how to get in and, and manipulate the you know, systems very quickly. So Monday's fabulous. Um, but also, yeah, Miro for me is my play space. I think it's great. And I know there was a question I just wanted to touch on that again. We had a question from a business. Um, in, I think it probably was in your session around getting those teams on board. So everybody works differently. You know, appreciate that. Aesthetics are a big thing for a lot of people. We touched on that in your session, but you know, the likes of Monday and stuff. I was a massive fan when I joined Always Possible to get that on board. But um what are your tips on you know getting people to you know join you on the journey? I think that's just, it's really valid. It's about having that, that open communication and that buy-in and understanding that everybody works differently, that asynchronous working is is the sort of nirvana of where we want to be. 
So understanding what's needed. So is this an email? Is it a video? Is it a broadcast? Can someone catch up later? Or does it have to be online now? So everybody's time is used respectfully and appropriately. And if you're collaborating, that's when you need to make sure you're in that space online to, to work on something together. And that's the best value and the best use of people's time. I think that's how you get buy-in. If somebody's on a meeting of all 30 staff and you know most of them are typing away on Teams in the background, then you sort of wonder, well, why are we here? Because that's just a broadcast. So working more, um, more appropriately with people's style, their timing, their flexibility, reducing as much online time as possible so really understanding how people focus so you've got your big sessions in the morning and you're not trying to do something you know really deep into finances at four o'clock and expect everybody to be able to keep up with the spreadsheet so yeah i think it's that understanding the mindset the way people work what you need them for and then just gently taking them through that training uh, and explaining not everybody's going to be up to speed not everybody touch types so you can't expect everyone to suddenly get online and start keeping up so you have to be very cognizant of that as a as a business leader yeah and we talked a lot about that didn't we it was about when are your power times in the day you know some people are morning some people are you know straight after lunch it's it's adapting to that isn't it you you kind of have to know and the onus is on you to be able to address that isn't it Am I really productive in the morning? Can I get lots done and, you know, block it out your day? We, we did touch on that. Do your finances, you know, whenever that fits with, with how you work <laughs> or never. <laughs> yeah. And what about you, Lindsay? Um, so my go-to tool and one that I can live without is definitely Todoist. So for those of you that aren't familiar with it, it's a task management app. Um, that syncs across all your devices and what I particularly love about it is it's just my kind of one-stop shop for recording all my ideas and to-dos and follow-ups so um, because it's it's on my phone it's with me all the time so if I wake up in the middle of the night with an idea or I'm walking down the street or I'm not at my desk I haven't got to kind of you know wait to come back and write something on a piece of paper it's kind of with me all the time and um, it's it's particularly good because it's organized in three ways it's organized under today um, upcoming so it's like the next seven days and then inbox which is beyond those seven days so it's a way of kind of filtering out and prioritizing your your tasks and to do's um, you can move the items around so it automatically create creates that sort of sense of chronology within the working day um, and then if and then you just kind of click and delete once you've achieved it which is particularly great it gives you that feedback so you can see how many tasks you've achieved um, and what's really good about it if you don't get to um, to achieve one of the task for whatever reason you can just you know by literally the press of a, of a button you can then just move that to tomorrow or to next week so you've you know it's just that way of knowing I've captured it I've got it I can either respond and do it now or kind of um, schedule it for the future which is particularly good you can also add filters and labels and priorities and you can share it amongst other people and um, yeah just kind of have those different categories for different things in your personal and professional life um, yeah couldn't live without it great and um, just to pull, pull up on a question that um, I think it was Vicky you actually asked this in one of the earlier sessions was social media it's a massive minefield there's so many things you know Instagram Facebook Twitter how do you you know what tools are there out there to be able to um, you know be able to post something once but then share it in all the channels and people mentioned Hootsuite you know to schedule things um, I'm trying to remember some of the other ones Buffer I yeah. don't know if anybody wants to pick this up. Is there anyone that can advise on this? Extra um, tools? I'm that... happy to give it a go. I mean, I first of all talk about rationalising. You know, we talk about that research in my piece. Is I do, You write stuff and people go, oh, I need to be on social. It's like, you probably don't need to be on every channel. Who are you talking to? What is your product? Who do you want to sell to? We had somebody who was on Breakthrough, for example, who was busy advertising on Facebook and he was getting all the wrong leads. People who just didn't value his services, didn't want to work with him, who were haggling over £60. You know, he didn't want to be there. He wanted to be with LinkedIn. He wanted corporate clients, but he'd never really thought about who his clients were, built his client personas. You know, I know Emma and I both spoke, spoke about quite a few of our sessions and, and actually then define who I want to talk to and where and be really precise about who that was. So, yeah, people think they need to just do this massive spread throw a massive great big net but it can be a waste of time i, I love buffer at hootsuite they're all great tools but actually I'd, I'd wind back and go what am i selling who am i selling it to where should i be it might just be linkedin is it and that that'll give you everything you need so i'd rationalize it first 
Vicky, I don't know where, where you're at with, with that. Did, um, have you kind of condensed it down as to which channels work for you or are you, are you still kind of debating that? Um, well, yeah, I've, I'm on uh, Facebook, Instagram, and, and I have actually uh, set up a, a LinkedIn as well. So um, it's just learning all of the different, um, just getting used to the, the different uh, ways of um, posting things and navigating myself around on it. But really, um, what I'd really like is, um, I haven't looked at the Hootsuite yet or the, the buffer, but I, I just want something that I can just do it in one place, bang, 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 all, all across and, um, and that sort of thing, just to make life easier. Because like you say, you know, time, you've got to be really careful with your time and before you know it you can start it two hours later you're still faffing around trying to, you know and by that point I've, I've lost the will so <laughs> so um but uh but yes I think um which one would you say would be the better Hootsuite or Buffer um to uh to try it out you, you've used them both, I, I, think. I think buffer i think buffer's cheaper right now um in terms of how their usability they are very similar I and and I, I yeah i've i've used both um the, one of my best things about working at sussex innovation center is we had to use the tools that our clients had so i got to use you know we talk about monday and, and asana and and trello i got to use all of them which is brilliant because you it's all about which one your brain likes, isn't it? In a way, Vicky, because you, you, I would try, I try Buffer if I were you, because I think it's cheaper and you can then schedule, say a month's worth, get it all out there, but obviously don't schedule too much. Te again, practice it, look at your analytics and see where you're getting responses, but see which one you find intuitively works for you. Okay, thank you. I think that's it, I think Lucy. Yeah, go on. You, you were saying it's, it's rationalizing it, it's saying which ones work. So by quickly by yeah. using this at least you're getting it out in all those channels and then you can quantify exactly what is working for you I think that's the key thing can I just sort of rewind just one step back from that I think um you know it's great that these tools are available to to help save time and to um you know to schedule things in advance rather than having to think about what am I going to post today what I'm going to post tomorrow next week etc but I think going one step back from that it's just about um you know creating kind of windows of time to focus on social media marketing because it is so time consuming it can be such a you know a, a rabbit world once you kind of get started so I think it's about um, batching I talked a lot about batching tasks you know tasks that you can kind of put together batch together so you really kind of focus on that specific task for that specific amount of time and then it's kind of it's gone you moved it on to something different and also thinking about the best time of your day to be focusing on that so for some people creating content is you know considered like it's a deep work it's you know that really highly focused uninterrupted time um, to kind of focus on that possibly in the morning if that's your most optimal time of the day for other people that's more of a kind of shallow type of work so it's something like more admin related they can just kind of you know get a few ideas down and schedule that in um batch that in off they go so it's really just thinking about what you want to talk about what you want to create and batching time for that um that that kind of suits your um optimal ways in which you work and your time and tasks yeah mm. and emiris now you delved us into the world of cybersecurity, which is, I mean, that session could be much longer. There was a lot to cover off, but I'm interested because you you obviously work in lots of different areas, but what tools kind of, you know, and you've got a big team now. So what team, what um what tools are keeping you afloat? Oh, well, good question. So in terms of general tools, um, uh, yeah, we're sort of big Slack users in Google Workspace um, in terms of those tools for collaboration. Um, so Google Drive is part of that in terms of some of the plans, um, project status, things like that, all in Google spreadsheets, uh, which are quite handy. Um, the other tool, big tool that we do use is Dropbox, um, although we've sort of played with it in different ways and pretty much now use it really as that sort of file storage and collaboration aspect there are things like Dropbox paper and other sort of things that are a bit like Google Docs and such which we don't tend to make much use of now we sort of tried out what works and actually decided uh, we'll either keep the files um, in there and collaborate on those or where it is a sort of a good collaboration one then we have that in, in Google Drive um, so that's a good sort of way to go um, uh, with things and then um, so yeah those are sort of collaboration communication tools 
in terms of if I pick up uh, actually social media, one thing I would say is there is another one to the two that you guys were discussing, but actually later.com. Um, later seems to be pretty good um, and reasonable pricing for what you get. The pricing model is slightly different, I think, actually, um, but just another one to, to potentially try. Um, and in terms of sort of cybersecurity um, aspect, just to bring it to my sort of presentation um, as well, um, there was a few tools that we discussed uh, at the session. And one thing, for example, is a VPN, you know, as quite a handy one. So it's a virtual private network, essentially a way of you sort of tunneling your computer, your uh, tablet, your mobile phone um, out to another server um, to go and explore something you're doing on the internet, rather than uh, people on the local network being able to see what you're doing or, or going through the router itself. So a VPN essentially is like a tunnel um, across to somewhere else so that it keeps everything a bit more private. Um, now, the one that I uh, personally use and, and sort of advocate for is something called Private Internet Access, um, PIA. Um, that's a good one. But there are other sort of good ones out there like NordVPN um, and, and that sort of one. So you can sort of have a bit of a Google. Um, there are a few places that offer them. Um, as part of their sort of product, so things like AVG security. Um, I also use Bitdefender personally as my sort of security platform for Mac. Um, and they also have VPN, so you can often find them sort of linked to some other tools that you might already be using um, as well. But that's sort of a good one, um, even if it is things like logging into your Facebook account to go and post some adverts or do something like that, and you're in a public cafe or something, so you're on a public network of some sort, then it's particularly good um, for that. We use a VPN also for the fact that we can connect to different cities and different places around the world um, and bypass sort of DNS stuff, which is a technical thing, um, but looking at sites um, sort of slightly fresh or how they load um, sort of via other servers and things um, as well. So yeah, that's sort of a VPN, um, quite a handy thing to explore. If you don't want to sort of add something that is um, an additional tool or something to your computer, you can also look at things like like um, the Opera web browser, which uh, not a lot of people sort of know about, we'll see, but they've got a built-in VPN, one click on the left of the sort of URL bar, and you can be connected through their VPN um, as well. So there are sort of ways um, that you can uh, use the browsers that you've got uh, available. Um, yeah, I mean, I could go on forever with all sorts of other tools, but that's a few few key things, uh, I think, to share. Um, but yeah, VPN, and I mentioned things like AVG and Bitdefender, uh, obviously having security software um, on your devices in general is great. Um, and whilst I'm on that topic, you know, think about your websites and stuff as well. Double check where are you hosting them? Who are you hosting them with? Um, do they collect sort of valuable or, or um, uh, data that actually needs to be protected more? Is a sort of shared hosting thing appropriate especially if you're with one of sort of the big ones that advertise on tv and stuff you may be on a on a system with literally thousands um of other sites and things so is that the right thing do you have firewalls um on there do you have um any sort of security scanning things like that on the servers and on the website um do you keep things up to date um, as well. So any software, any of the tools that we're talking about, most of which are sort of cloud based, but if especially if you've got them installed on your own server, so your websites or on your own computer, keeping things as up to date as possible um, is a great thing, especially if you're using something like WordPress, which gets regular updates and unfortunately is also a big target. Um, so keeping things up to date uh, is really valuable. Thank you. And Jodie, what about you? You're obviously working with lots of different clients, so you're hearing I'm sure you've been abreast to all the different new technology always introduced and everything goes out of date. So what about you? No, um, I think it's, it's really interesting actually because we have gone through so many different um, project management tools. We've tried so many different apps and, and, and things like that. And it, actually project management is the one where we kind of struggle the most because um, you know, when I the way that I work is very different from the way other people on the team work. And so when I was working on my own, I a certain system worked for me when other people are working with it and we're collaborating a different system and so but I, I yeah I mean it's really about behavior for me my brain and the way I work doesn't suit the kind of technology that has lots of distraction that has lots of features on it and so real you know simplicity is like the most important thing for me so things like like using Google Drive and, and um, uh, Google Sheets and uh, you know basically the whole sort of like the the, the Google workspace is, is was really important when I was um, you know, collaborating with um, uh, marketers in the US, you know, we'd be we'd be on the phone, we'd be on the phone, basically, while also working live on, you know, a, a piece of work for two or three hours. And, and it was just, it was incredibly useful. And so 
just through the process of using that, I, you know, we managed to, I didn't realize that as a, as a, as a business, we'd become sort of, you know, um, disaster proofed and in the cloud and things like that. It's just simply through the behavior we were using, just, you know, we all ended up because, because we needed to collaborate in that way. So, so for, for us, like something really simple, like Google drive without having to use anything else, you know, any uh, sort of project management software or anything was really important. Um, the, the other couple of things that we, you know, that, that I find really, really useful is, is Slack. Um, I don't, again, like things like to-do lists and things like that. This is, this all depends again on how you work. My best, my best to-do list is, um, is Meg in my office telling me the three things that I need to do today on Slack. And that's it. That's how that, you know, if I have to go into something and do it, the, all, all chaos reigns. And so it's all about knowing what, what works for you and how it works for you. And that, and they, you know, as soon as I think they see me using an app of some sort or trying to do something, everyone kind of groans and, and tries to take it off me. Um, and then something really simple, like, like, you know, voice recorder on your, on your iPhone, like for taking note, for me, I find it really easy. You know, I can, I can dictate stuff into that and then, and then use something like Rev or Temi to, to get it written up. And, you know, I can do that when I'm traveling in the car and stuff, you know, I can, I can, you know, you know, write whole chapters of books when I'm when I'm doing that as well. And so again, it just kind of fits into what I'm doing. So, but I, I try to keep it really, really simple. Well, that leads us seamlessly on to my next question, which was going to be around how do you keep productive? You know, we're all working remotely, you know, whether it's in shared working spaces or at home, you know, what what are those things that that help you? Um, let me bring it back to Lucy. So the first thing that springs to mind is going for a walk, but that's not really a digital tool, is it? It helps. I think all this stuff, which we've talked continuously around, you know, with, you know, those, those times of day when you're more productive, but those times of days when you need to have, just get out in the fresh air, we're, you know, we're guilty of all just staying in and just, you know, getting everything done, but it's so important. I totally agree with what Lindsay was saying, and I think it, I think it's been touched on by everybody. So it's really listening to yourself and knowing what how you work and how you think and what motivates you and what drags you down, and then being really aware of your personal battery. And if you're feeling really shattered, take a break, do something differently. I'm with Jodie. I love Slack. That's the way my brain works. I like it visual. Those sort of tools keep me motivated. I like the silliness. That's something that really helps me. You know, we're all doing Wordle at the moment in Always Possible and despairing at each other. But feeling a part of a conversation, even when we can't be with each other, is what really motivates me. I'm very much a people person. Uh, I find it, I've really struggled with, with lockdown and being alone. So using those digital tools to create conversations and make them not all just work-based, make them a bit of fun, put some silly things on the random channel, uh, on Slack as an example, and use them to create an energy that we, we've all been missing. Yeah. And Emma, you talked about that in your session. It was you know, you don't want to start creating these games and things. You know, we've had two years of lockdown. People have been forced to do these online cocktails and all these types of things. How do we kind of keep that momentum and keep that interest between colleagues when you're working? You know, how, how what have you, what do you promote as useful things for that? I think having something with a bit of a sense of shared purpose is good. So if the purpose is fun, that's valid if the purpose is something community driven or volunteering based there are other platforms for that um anything that just means people get to have a chat that isn't just work so when you used to go to physical meeting you'd be outside together for a few minutes before the meeting room was available you would have a bit of a chit chat you'd get in get the coffee then you'd start the meeting then you finish and you've got a few minutes to walk back to wherever whereas now we go right we've got a 12 o'clock meeting bang start off we go one o'clock off we go finish and so it's creating that space for those little informal chats so if you think about your staff interactions your um, interviewing onboarding your one-to-ones your appraisals anything that has that sort of human aspect you need to work out how to recreate that very authentically we can't just and we also read things really inappropriately when they're put into teams they're put into text they're put into email if someone writes something in caps then you think that's it you're being fired um so you have to be really careful about how you come across on text voice and visually and it's much harder for people to read those cues when you're online um so yeah any opportunity for that human interaction a bit of fun but also be okay turning stuff off so I don't play Wordle, I've turned off the channel. For people who love it, great, fill your boots, but I don't want the pings, I don't want the alerts. For me, I use Slack as very much a work tool, 
and then sometimes the chats but I like to control what I do with all of these pieces of tech and so I turn things off um, I turn off teams I turn off email and I will be most productive first thing in the morning do the big strategic things early turn off emails turn off whatsapp then it can happen later or else suddenly you find you're sidetracked and you're down the rabbit hole and you're sort of you know poodling around doing something else and then your brain's not back in that space again so yeah i'm an early morning person but also don't be afraid to turn things off um but then when you are communicating be be appropriate and you know with the right channel and interject some fun but never have an online pub quiz again please <laughs> I think yeah, it's 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 what Jody says. You've got to make what works for you. He he likes things that aren't distracting. So it's yeah, switching yourself off from those things that are distracting and being able to focus. Vicky, just to bring you into this conversation, what what works for you? How are you finding this kind of silo working? And you know, I know you you move around a bit, don't you? So what works for you? Um, well, I've. Uh... I've just been, in fact, last night I was actually, for the first time ever, trying to move over a landing page host server from one to another. So that, that was an interesting thing for me. So, um, you know, bearing in mind my, my sort of technology and that. Um, but, um, but I do find that um, these, these uh, sessions have been really sort of helpful because I'm just sort of trying to kind of navigate and get my mind around all the different areas and all the different um, technologies like this Slack that everyone's going on about. I need to kind of have a, have a good old look at that next um, and, um, and that sort of thing. But, um, but yeah, sorry, what, what was the question again? Sorry. No, it was just saying what, what works for you really, with... you know. Yeah, what, what works for you and, and how you're kind of navigating this this whole new way of working, I guess. Well, yeah, I've been uh, I've been doing a lot of um, networking and uh, doing a lot of sort of um, sessions like this, sort of trying to kind of learn as much as I possibly can. Um, and uh, and the thing is, I, I love I love the networking side of actually going out and meeting the people as well. So seeing yourselves all on, on the screen and that I'm able to kind of go out and visit people as well. And and with with um, with my uh, stuff, um, I love the the personal touch and actually meeting the people it, it make it, it means a lot to me so when i'm doing deliveries for instance it, it's that personal sort of touch that i like to try and keep in touch with um compared to just um sending sending my products out in the post and there there you go it's it's that more sort of personal bespoke touch that i love about my my thing but it's it's just it's just navigating around doing that being able to do the deliveries doing online things um, and when when meetings have then been made into zooms and then um, in in person and then change back to zoom it, it's just adapting as as and when really um, it's all about adapting really I I've been finding that I've just had to if you know one one minute you're doing this no you can't do that because things have changed and it's um, it's just keeping up with um, what what's going on and trying to learn the new new technologies and the new things that are out there. And and also these seminars that I've been coming to and like yourselves, um, this series and I've I've been on all of the series, so uh, so it's been really interesting. Um, you know, watching from from the first ones that were done um to uh to learning so much in a in a short space of time and and i will i will get around to uh taking advantage of the uh, digital champion uh thing but i just haven't got around to it yet so um so it's it's uh it's i i will get around to it that's definitely for sure vicky can i ask you vicky can i ask you a question yes. um, yes. do you do you have do you have a team no no okay right okay so, so this, i mean I, do you, mind if I, do you mind if I make a couple of suggestions? Of course. Um, okay, so uh, one of the things you said earlier there, I think is, is something that a lot of other people do. Like we were talking about Slack there and everyone's going on about how great Slack is and everything else like that. Now Slack is at, uh, totally pointless if you haven't got a team. Like it's, you know, it, it, you don't need it at all, but you don't know that 
until you start like investigating and stuff like that. So, so I mean, that, that kind of, this is exactly what happens whenever anyone has discussion about technology, they always go, oh, everyone's talking about it, I need to grab that. I think what you've talked about some very specific behaviors that you have that work for you right now. And I think finding the technology that matches those things. So one thing that you've mentioned there was networking and you absolutely love networking. And so if you focus, I mean, like there, there's certain like social, so one of the things you said before is like, do I need to get, um, Hootsuite or Buffer in order to you know make sure that I'm like you know I'm doing the social media thing. Well, I would argue that you that if you're going to do a social media channel, you need to do it according to what that social media channel requires. So you're doing it not because you're ticking it off the box. You're doing it because you want to get results from that. And if you want to get results from it, you have to understand. You know, if I'm on LinkedIn, LinkedIn's a networking site. If I'm on Instagram you know, there, there has to be a, a, some sort of engagement, just posting stuff onto those things. You'll do that, it'll take up more time than you realize, but because the technology has told you, oh, you're gonna save time, you feel like you're doing something. I've, I've worked with people who spend all of their time creating content, pushing it out through Hootsuite, huge amount, but they don't interact, they don't use those channels as they're supposed to. So I would say, because, you know, because of the type of person you are, you are a networker, you're very good. I would use the social media as an extension of that. So somewhere like LinkedIn, LinkedIn is incredible if you have those offline connections and, and Instagram is to some extent as well making those offline connections, bringing them online, um, you, because offline connections are brilliant for, for ensuring that, you know, things like your posts, when you put them up, get huge amounts of engagement. And then that, that, you know, that gets your message to more people, increases your reach. So I would focus on, on, on the things you're doing and think what, what technology complements it and just focus on those. I wouldn't worry about things like, you know, Hootsuite, I need to go and create content. I would focus on what you're doing now and think, okay, what what do these two or three things that complement that and then build from there? I hope that's helpful. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Just, yeah. just carrying on from that, um, Jade, as well, you know, just to sort of echo that, I'm a really big fan of keeping things simple. And sometimes we can make things so much more complicated for ourselves by trying to use these tools um, to to save time and actually it becomes more time consuming. So I think it's about creating really good habits. I think it's about using effective uh, systems and processes that work that work best for you and to use them so consistently that it almost becomes second nature. You know, they become like your second brain, they become your go-to systems for support rather than something that's, um, that's get, trying to help but actually kind of costs more time and, and, and sort of adds to that overwhelm rather than reduces that overwhelm. Um, and I think it's also about creating habits and about having embedding those habits really effectively into the way that we work. I've actually just created it. They're hot off the press and they arrived a few days ago. Um, I created a product here called, uh, here's one I made earlier, um, called Productivity Prompts so that literally sit on your desk and they're just like a set of like 30 spiral bound cards just to kind of have those sort of little um, reminders, those kind of prompts um, to focus on that one thing for the day, you know, it could be it could be a well-being project. It could be you know get outside, keep hydrated. It could be a planning or a prioritizing or a motivational um, thing. But just something to kind of help focus, and then over time, those those prompts, those habits, just become embedded into the way in which we work. Um, so yeah, I'm a big fan of that. I'll put a, I'll put a little uh, link to them in the chat. Okay. I think yeah, and Lucy, you, you were quite dismissive when you said, oh, you know, part of it's the work for me is going for a walk, but. You know, I think I think everyone more so than ever appreciates how important that is for your own, you know, wellness, mental health. You know, these these are more important. And you know, Emma, I'm sure you've seen that when you're working with teams, you've got to be checking in with your teams to see how they're doing, to see how you can support them with, with you know, maybe just going for a walk or just having time to chat and time to talk. Maybe not about work, but just how you're doing in yourself. And you know, that's massively important. I would agree. I think one of the issues I see a lot with um, business owners and, and leaders is not understanding that people don't just want to talk about project deliverables, but how are you doing? You know, what's going on? Read, read the room, literally, rather than, OK, hi, let's do a one to one. Let's do an appraisal. And then what's happening with the project? Bang, bang, bang. That's not relevant. What's relevant is how people are feeling. You know, you can do a project update on an email. But use that time to just kind of put the notepad away and say, right, you know, what do you want to do for your own personal development, professional development, learning opportunities? This is about working with people. So, you know, systems and projects are great. They make the, the wheels go round. Um, but but yeah, just interacting, interacting properly. I think there's, there's a risk 
that we, we forget. So onboarding, working together and off, offboarding as well. You know, as people leave, you can close a laptop on a Friday, change jobs, sit in the same seat and on a Monday, open a new laptop for a new job, log into a new Zoom call or a new Teams instance, and you've changed jobs. But, you know, you're still the same person in the same office. So it's really weird. We need to understand how, how those behaviors and, and characteristics play out because it's not, you know, it's not the norm. We don't get to go and buy new work clothes and start somewhere different and- We'll have a leaving do. Shop. We'll have a leaving <laughs> yeah. do. It's yeah. remembering what it's like for, for, for real people at the end of the screen as to what it's like to leave, um, you know, especially if you've been in a job for a long time. Yeah, I think it's really good. And, you know, Emma's session touched on that. We've got all these tools at play, but you know, we need to think about the human aspect, you know, how do we support people? These are the ones that are being productive and doing all this, but, you know, we need to look, check in on them as well. Definitely. So I just had one final question, um, and then I'm going to hand it over to NASA, who's joined us from Coast to Capital. He's going to explain a little bit more about access to um, free support from our digital champions. Um, I wanted to just ask, this you know, we Richard's session last week touched on businesses that have done things differently and the pandemic has forced them to, you know, whether it's adopting digital tools, changing their business model. Are there any businesses you've seen work um, and done, ama done amazing things, you know, whether whether it's someone you've worked with or someone you just look at and think what a great job they've done? Uh, Jodie, can I start with you? Or, or just raise your hand if there's, if there's anyone that you think you'd like to highlight i'm sure everyone's doing brilliant jobs but it's it's nice to see those companies that you can really aspire to i can't think anything off the top of my head so i'll have a little think okay <laughs> is there any anyone want to come up with anyone they'd like to share some details behind i've i've done a lot of go on jeremy go on. i was just going to say that um joe from piglet's pantry i think that's quite a, an interesting study if you weren't on the call last week just the whole idea of taking a, a business to business wholesale business that relies on crowds of football matches to eat pies um, to a, a consumer business, which just had a grew into a phenomenal, I think, three million pound turnover retail business. But the growing pains as well. And that was the interesting thing about this and the, the whole series has been uh, it, it's good to get the ideas and the inspiration. But it's also good to hear where people went wrong. So you can say, I won't do that then. Um, because other people's mistakes cost you a lot less. I think as Brits, we like to hear that, you know, that humble thing, um, not the humble thing, sorry, the, the honesty, you know, mm. what didn't work for them in their business. I think I think that's important. And welcome, Mylene, for joining us. Um, if you've got any questions, do, do feel free to pop them in the chat or turn your video on and ask. Um, yeah, Lucy, sorry, you were going to say. So no, Steph, I was going to talk about a project which we had, uh, we still have in the West of England called Tech for Growth. It was called Trading Better Online. It was launched in June 2020. So we had all those businesses whose front doors had literally closed. A lot of them were hospitality and retail and leisure who came to us and didn't know what they didn't know because they'd never had to use to go online. They'd never had to use any of the tools which have been covered in these topics. And they came to TechSpark as kind of a mediator to say, I don't know. I know that where I am right now, I'm stuck, but I don't know how to, to get unstuck. So we helped they're still going it's brilliant and we help so many on their journey they wouldn't go to an agency they wouldn't go to a digital consultancy because they were scared one one guy his the guy who built his website had gone AWOL he literally had no logins to get into his site he he couldn't go and ask anybody else so we saw people going through really painful digital transformation journeys and and just build their confidence so our role in that project was to empower them not to do it for them they come and say well I think I need SEO and as Jody same as you were going that they've heard this word uh, you know SEO will fix all my problems and they didn't understand what it meant and people have been door knocking saying well, 400 pounds a month will fix it for you so taking people th who were really scared through a very small digital transformation project was it was really it was really exciting it was a great thing to be a part of but it shows you how levels of confidence and knowledge in this area it is for so many businesses it's quite daunting yeah definitely and you know Jody just said their SEO is free exactly <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, NASA, um, that leads us on to you. Um, you're from Coast to Capital, um, who's looks after all the digital champions that have been joining us throughout these series, who ultimately they want to support the businesses in areas that whether they know they need help or they don't know they need their help. And I think that's the key thing for you guys, isn't it? You can help people navigate as to what assistance they need and from which digital champion. I know we've got Rachel with us today as well, who's 
marketing specialist and can guide people in that direction. Shall I um, hand it over to you, Nasser? Uh, yeah, sure. I'm just really wondering whether there's anyone actually on this call that actually doesn't know what the digital champions and the uh, I think, growth champions are. I think a lot are. of them have heard it, but it's always good to revisit this. And also, you know, the video is going to be shared on West Sussex's uh, YouTube channel. So for those okay. accessing it at a later point um, to work around their business, they can access it and, and hear from you. So please do. Great. Uh, can I share my uh, Yeah, screen? please do. Great. So can everyone um, see this at all? Just want to just double check. Great. Um, yeah, I, I'm actually quite new to the uh, Coast of Capital. I know quite a few people on the, uh, the call. I'm, I'm, I'm doing a, a three days a week um, at Coast of Capital at the moment. And one of the growth associates, relationship associates for Coast of Capital, if I just give you a little brief about myself, I've run and bought and sold software houses in the past. Um, I had a consultancy business and then I've... Uh, doing some work with Coast of Capital on three days a, a week with regards to trying to help the um, predominantly the Gatwick and Crawley uh, business areas in terms of uh, turning those businesses around and, and, and working with theirs. So uh, working with the Growth Hub has been actually pretty good. I've really enjoyed it. Um, and basically the, the Growth Hub is a fully funded um, area of Coast of the Capital where you know, we can work and work with uh, particular partners, digital champions that are here, uh, growth champions that are help businesses uh, really take them from a position where they're actually treading water and, and stuck um, and look at the services uh, that uh, Coast of Capital offer. Um, and really, it's all client led. It, it's about working with um, you know, yourselves. Uh, Stephanie, and looking at the Recovery and Rise program, I've tried to join as much as I could uh, in the time that I started so I could get myself up to speed. And really, um, yeah, on the back of those um, those uh, sessions is to try and uh, get the the clients, I suppose, you know, the best of words, but business owners and businesses to, to start looking at the um, Digital Champion program. Um, so much so that I've got a little slide here about what the Digital Champions um, uh, offer and the drive for small businesses. Um, it's literally, a, a, I won't read it verbatim, but basically eight hours of fully funded uh, specialist support, which to me is, is you know, a massive thing for you know, business owners that are looking uh, to demystify themselves. Um, if I, uh, point Vicky out as a uh, you know, it, you know, listening to what you you just said you know the, the digital champions I would urge you to try and um, place the digital champions in you know, your top priority list really in terms of where you can seek help I mean certainly uh, on the website there's a, a listing and I've come through to the listing of the uh, the digital champions that we we have on board and some of them are here again it's about reaching out to people who are experts in the field and you know um, coining a phrase from Jeremy learning from those who have you know been there tried it may have failed worked out the ones that really work and then yeah you're in a great position given your your business to try and um, capture that and uh, and you know springboard yourself so I'd really you know impress on you to try and look at the digital champion program um, uh, as a real key thing to do uh, going forward in terms of your next business plan. Um, primarily because of the bottom statement of the here, you know, each digital channel offers different blends of skills. Uh, and that is key. You know, it's about demystifying what can be a, such a jargon um, you know, area of business. So here we've got some of the uh, digital champions. Um, Say so Andrew, Lisa, uh, Malcolm, I've done quite a lot of work with. Uh, Rachel, I haven't had the pleasure of uh, appointing anyone to yet, but hopefully that'll be as I kick into my uh, remit uh, of business and the, uh, Lisa appointed a few too. Um, and as you can see, um, everyone has a specific set of skills. Uh, everyone has uh, you know, longevity in their business and also the ability to, to try and help businesses. Well, I think it's the key thing. It's about guiding and help and also point, sign point, you know, signposting people to 
you know, particular areas that you know they wouldn't have been able to do. Most business owners, if I take your your point there, Vicky, are so immersed in your business, you forget that actually you've got to run your business. So you know, you talked about delivery, you talked about you know packaging everything up, and you know you are so immersed in it. You, know, you, you, you at the end of the day, all you want to do is partially forget about it. But the whole point is by taking some time out and having a fully funded access to the expertise that um, you would want to have in an ideal situation then make the most of it I would say uh, I think your business are you based Worthing way or yeah okay so uh, anyone else who does look at this video please you know utilize the website look at the contact form uh, look at the uh, digital champion page both Digital champions and growth champions. Uh, I know Jeremy's on there. Um, and look at the skill sets that these guys have because they're exceptional. And also make sure that you can actually then uh, follow up with your growth relationship associate who has their particular patches. Uh, and you can see that on the website as well. So, really, uh, that really sums up what I wanted to say, Stephanie. Thank you, Nasser. That's great. Yeah, and um, I'm all right in thinking that um, all access is available to the end of March. So for those that are interested in, in oh, taking that yes, up. sorry, Stephanie, I should have added yeah. that. Yeah, apologies. Yes, uh, up until the 31st of March, um, at the end of this financial, public sector financial year. Yeah, so those that are interested, please do have a look. And as Nasa said, for those that are unsure about which, which um, expert they need or area they want support with, um, there's someone there at the end of the phone that can support you with that and see how best to support your business so fantastic thank you for that um yes nasa would you mind thank you that's great okay um does anybody have any further questions or anything they want to flag up before we close i did promise um we'd finish a bit earlier for um for lunch so thank you so much for your involvement today um Really appreciate it. And for all our facilitators for hosting the sessions throughout the series. It's been a um, fun filled January with lots to learn. And I've definitely taken a lot more on board. So um, I'm really grateful for all your support and best of luck with with everyone with everything. Thank you.